chance to do some some really you know flat out comedy with Smashka. Yes, Smashka, exactly. We're seeing us. I think that the the trilogy, you know, Last House, House on the Edge of the Park, and Hitchhike, not necessarily in that order. Uh, I would probably have to say you know, were maybe my my best uh, um, calling card, the ones I like the best. Another question? This gentleman here? Yeah, what was it like working with you know, the Italian, 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 I'm looking forward to saying hello to him. Ruggiero and I have been friends for years and years and years. We fight all the time, but uh, that's probably what, uh, what constitutes a good friendship. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I've done a lot of work with Ruggiero, so we, we kind of know each other. Well, I haven't slept with his wife, now. <laughs> <laughs> She's hot, by the way. Yes, she is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other questions? Yeah, I just wanted to say that Ruggiero is a great for last house? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, you know, basically, I, I took my guitar up to the set and uh, and just tried to emulate the movements and the uh, and the emotions of of the various characters. And then once I got some kind of thematic stuff going in my head, I was able to sit down and you know and write write the music. And I thought rather than write uh, you know, straight up soundtrack kind of music. I thought it was uh, w would be much more interesting for the film if I were to kind of to uh, uh, attach a song or at least a lyric or a phrase or something to the uh, to the various characters. So that's essentially the, yeah, how I started to work. And then Steve Chapin was incredible in the studio. He really took my arrangements and you know added life to them and. Uh, did most of the orchestration, so it was kind of a collaborative effort. Thank you. Thank you. Was it called again a deliberate or was that an afterthought? Um, I'm sorry again. The comedy soundtrack. Um, was that? Are you talking about the uh, the Sadie and Krug thing in, the, in yeah. the soundtrack? No, I wanted to do a counterpoint. I, I, um, I, I mean, I grew up on horror films, you know, and, and uh, I grew up on films. Period. And I always felt that the, the, the soundtracks were, were kind of, instead of, they were emulating what was going on on the screen, and that was good a lot of times, you know, with big or orchest orchestral stuff because, you, it, you know, it affected you emotionally, but I thought that it would be kind of fun to try to see if I could go against what was going on the screen. You know, so when something really was, you know, happening that was just heinous to look at, yeah, put some comedy to it, make something make some music that's light, that goes against it, and, and I think it broadens the, broadens the emotion. Yeah, yeah. C can I ask a quick question, David? Um, no. <laughs> uh -huh. You shut up. <laughs> I'm going to ask it anyway. But when, when, when you were, uh, you know, have, having known you for a long time and known you as a, a fairly gentle... Tell I go back a long way to know me, otherwise... Known you as a fairly gentle and agreeable gentleman, um, on the set of Last House in the West, <laughs> on the set of Last House and Left, I mean, um, how much discussion was there on what the agenda was? Like, I mean, how much did you discuss what was going on in Vietnam at the time and how you were trying to, you know, show the, uh, what it was really like to take a human being's life and how revenge was, uh, you know, it kind of sapped a human soul? There wasn't really much. I mean, we were all pretty much um, upset with the situation. I, 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 I was past the draft age, but uh, Mark wasn't at the time, and um, uh, there was a, I think that was really the beginning of, of, of helplessness, and that helplessness we, we took out on the screen, you know, it, it, it kind of exploded onto the screen, so in, in answer to your question, the fact that Vietnam was going on at the time, that we didn't want to be there, that there was, there was this helpless, you know, feeling. Direction-wise, um, very little once the uh, once the four of us bonded and the girls too I mean we all really were like a family once that happened it, it just uh, 
it, it took a shape of its own. It, uh, there was never a, um, yeah, we followed a script, and you've read the script before, so you, but uh, it, 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 it's, I wouldn't say that it's loosely based on the script, but there's certain, a lot of liberties that were taken. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it was, uh, it was, it, it was kind of a happening, is what it was. It was a five-week happening that, that I don't think anybody understood. Um, we were just doing something, and um, we all, at the time, Fred too. And I mean, if you get him, Fred Lincoln, we're talking about. If you, if you get him aside and you ask him, we all knew that we were doing something that was important to us. Was it important to the rest of the world? I don't think we we understood that. Um, Wes certainly didn't understand that. Wes was his first film, and uh, I think he was probably more frightened than anybody else. I mean, he gave very, very little direction. Okay, can I take a question? I'm, I will come to you, but Jenny. Sorry, I, just, um, I think Carol's going to set it up for an interview at some point later, but just while everyone's here, it's a, it's a big question, really. Uh, how did a nice guy like you, who started out writing songs for pop stars and so forth, end up in films like this? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is strange because, you know, I mean, it's, it's a very grisly part, and you, you do put all your life into it. I mean, it's, it's a once in a lifetime performance, really. Um, well, I, I would have to say, if you've ever heard any of my music, uh, then, then, you, then you get a pretty good. Uh, uh, you know, barometer of, of how I was able to do the acting. I don't, I don't hold back on anything. I really don't. Um, my wife will tell you that, too. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, in, in any case, it's, uh, so um, the, the concept of playing a bad guy uh, always appealed to me because it's like you get the opportunity to play against your character who you really are, and um, it was always in the back of my mind. Well, if I play this character and you know, and I'm boss of the wall because I don't know how to do it any other way. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a secret. Nobody, nobody really knows this story, but um, I was in the middle of a rugby tournament at the time. We were, um, we were, we were the Eastern Rugby Union was in a rugby tournament with five other. Other uh, other teams, a couple of I think there was one team from from England that came over. There was a team from France, team from um, uh, South Africa, and uh, you know, or they were on our turf, so we weren't going to lose. We just were not going to lose. And um, and I played number eight, and um, my nickname on the rugby field was the Mad Hessian. So you you, you can take it from there. I coming from a rugby game and going to the set up up in Connecticut, a lot of what I was doing on the rugby field, I think, really kind of came out in the film. And you didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's the first thing you've told me. That yeah. Is kind of yeah. Ever since you came out of the closet. Uh, has anybody <laughs> else got every question? Uh, I'm trying to think people haven't asked. Uh, this James. This is James, isn't it? Aye. Uh, what's it like being attacked by a chainsaw? What is it like being attacked by a chainsaw? What's that? That guy's name's Gaylord, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what's it like being attacked by a Gaylord? Oh, he's called Gaylord. He's holding a chainsaw. You know, I'm something I could demonstrate it to you, and that would be. <laughs> <laughs> come, come on down here. All right, James, come down. You're going to make him. You're going to make a fill up, Mark. <laughs> If anybody's got a film, please film this and put it on YouTube. Now come at me with a chainsaw. You're going to scare the shit out of me, right? So this is what we did. We did it this way. Okay. So, but I'm backing up. I'm backing up. Move your arm. Move, move. That's it. I'm backing up, but I'm holding you. Uh -huh. I'm holding the chainsaw. I have the strength of the chainsaw. You mm -hmm. don't. He's allowing me to have the strength. Uh, on, on film, it looks the same. <laughs> Whether he comes at me or not, it still looks the same. So mm -hmm. we, they, were, they were just trying to protect each other. I, I actually was the aggressor in that, although it didn't
it's more fast than cloud jokes. Yeah, I'm telling a lot of shit here. Okay, and, uh, no, I know we had other questions from the front. Do you have any, any other questions? 